Yo, welcome back to the past here on the Joy News channel on Multi TV. Let's try and let me do something a bit more unpredictable that I haven't done in a while. I'm more sinner than saint, but who ain't? I'm in a dark place trying to keep the lights on greatness. You're too short to be telling tall tales. Fight your level or stay quiet. Though I often write, my default is to go left. Well, I see myself in these words, but truth is, I am not the author of these words. He has made his talent, his profession, but lays it with a lot of passion. My guest is known in some circles as Amet, or M. Dots, and from speech, he loves to let his utterances manifest. Kwame Ametepechi Kata, popularly known as Manifest, joins me today on the show. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Thank you. That as was always. quite a rousing introduction. Was it? Yes, yes. Was it? Anyway, um, let's get down to, you know, the popular conversation first. Then we'll, <laughs> then we'll talk about the, the, the regular business. That's nowhere cool. That's the popular conversation. Nowhere cool is the regular business. Oh, but really? uh, we'll talk about the popular <laughs> conversation for now. Sure. The last comment I heard from you in recent times is, mm. Sir Kodia and I are not the best of friends. What does that mean? Yeah, I think that was a paraphrase. Okay. Now, I was just, I think I was asked the question that as the status of friendship, and I was just clarifying that, you know, sometimes we're musical colleagues with mutual respect, but people, not, people who are cool with each other are not necessarily best of friends. Mm. That's, that's all I was that's saying. That's all it so is. I think yeah, it was a paraphrase. It was kind of a skewed paraphrase. You yeah. say you don't like beef, but what is this between you and Sarkodia? Philosophical differences. What does what does that mean? It's exactly what it means. <laughs> Sometimes people have different points of view and they air it, so it's not a big deal. Because you know, and you put it quite simply, but the songs we've listened to, mm -hmm. the back and forth between you and Sarkodie, some say that it's beautiful for the music industry because you get to see people show their dexterity in language. But yeah. was there an ulterior motive in all of this? No, I don't believe so. I think it's inspired individuals with different points of view. And then it happens and we keep it moving and hopefully people enjoy the conversations about content, etc. And, and then we give them more amazing music and then other people can join different conversations and they can be conversations about many things. Music is a platform to be able to have many different conversations and I think we should not shy away as artists to be able to do that. And having critique does not mean we're enemies or we're fighting. So what, what you're doing was just a critique? It was a conversation. It was a conversation. <laughs> but it can't be a critique in a conversation. Yeah, of course. That's part of a conversation. What team do you support? Well, uh, everyone knows that. I'm mm. sure you and I are, are on the same bus. Arsenal, Manchester right. United. No, Arsenal. You're Arsenal now? Yeah, so exactly. Really? So we could be having a conversation <laughs> that's very heated right now. That's all it okay. is. Okay. So because, because some call it a claim for musical territory. You don't see it as such. No, there's enough space for so many talents. I mean... For, yeah, for so many people. I think we actually need a bigger scene mm. with a lot of quality content for many different people. We actually need even more women. I think there are more women coming, but we need more. We need, I want to see more women producers. Producers. How many women producers do you know? Uh, not too many. Exactly. I want to see a lot because we need all this content. So I don't think it's, ter the territory is big. It's, it's big. not just even Ghana. Africa is our terrain. The world is our oyster. I mean, right now, it's, it's not the time for us to actually worry that we are in some small corner and we need to be marking land. So what, we all misinterpreted this? Is that what it is? No, everybody, once we put our music, everybody's entitled to their opinion. That, I will, not, I will not begrudge anybody from doing that. But I am saying in terms of the exaggerations that come with it. I mean, I think beef sounds like war. <laughs> but it's not war. It's not it's war. Not. Okay, it's not war. because I tell you what, and it's fascinating when you tell people who you speak to and the kind of questions yeah. you say you should ask. A friend of mine, Abna Budu, in the UK sent me, they says, mm -hmm. uh, some call what's happening between Sarkozy and Manifest, what will unfold on Saturday in Manchester. Two talented and great personalities who are slagging it out for a seat of dominance. Is that how you see it? Manchester? Yeah. What's going on in Manchester? Guardiola and uh, Mourinho. Mourinho. Oh, okay. But yeah, don't they shake hands after every every football match? Is that the same that happens with you? I mean, I think in 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 even um, in any kind of sport or in any kind of creative rivalry or whatever, it's at the moment where people are engaged in what they are in. When I'm in the studio, mm -hmm. you can't tell me anything. <laughs> I, or as we say in popular pigeon, I know they hear. You understand? In moments of inspiration, but. I think we learn to separate that from, unless people have personal problems with each other, any kind of creative rivalry is fine. And you know, we're making music, everybody's making music, and the fans have the, you know, now the opportunity to hear so many more voices. Mm. 
and to engage and to say we like this, we like that, we like both. You don't even have to choose. You can like as many as you want. <laughs> I mean, well, except when it's football, you have to choose. You can't yeah, one week. You can't be, you know. <laughs> but this is not you can't football. Be flip -flopping, yeah. Music. When you go out and you're having a good time, when you're in your car, etc. Sometimes it's even about the music, the songs. It's not even about the artist. You you almost take ownership of the songs more than you do the artist. Okay. Yeah. Now I look at some of you know your lyrics, and I can't help but notice if what you're doing is music. Yeah. What genre do we put you in? Well, I think it's hip hop. But it has a different understanding, so it's hip hop with a Ghanaian understanding, uh, and that's how hip hop has always been. Because the hip hop I grew up on later became hip life, at least locally, an adaptation. Now, in different parts of America or different places, they say trap, drill, etc. So, yeah. depending on where you come from in music, I think you can always bring the music of your origins to it. Our Ghanaian music is. We have so so much in terms of not just traditional music, but mm. popular music of before. You see, that an interesting conversation is people forget when they say high life is traditional music. It was, it was the popular music of the time. It's not Adora, it's not Agbaja. Yeah. But they also take from that. So we are doing the same thing. We are, we are influenced by the music of the world, but we also bring the music that is of Ghana, of Ghana to it. And then try and push it forward a bit. That's what I've tried to do with this album, Nowhere Cool. It's like, bring that together but try and find a new experimental way to push it forward so that then it becomes even harder to classify okay. and at the end of the day you might say oh he's a good Ghanaian musician it's great Ghana music that would be the great result and that, that <laughs> okay so because yeah. I, I i look at the albums you've done manifestations yeah. in 2007 yeah. bet and the beat immigration chronicles coming to america apply mm -hmm. the price of free and now nowhere cool yeah in all these albums you do What's the biggest selling point? What do you seek to achieve with each album? I think I, I try to put in a lot of work on both the production and lyrical side. And so I hope, I've hoped that with a lot of what I've done before, it would have staying power just past the year or two. Longevity, music that people can sit with, memories. They can be in their time capsule and say, hey, in 2010, and with this album, it's not even just that, it's pushing the boundaries so that people can say, well, when we had Nowhere Cool, this, is, this defines certain things. This helped to push the music in a much positive way. The same way when I, a lot of us artists had Paimuka by Obafo, it really changed our understanding of what mm. was possible from a Ghanaian lyrically and musically. And so i uh, giving props to Hama as well because he was involved. So I think with Nowhere Cool, that's why I'm trying to take it. I spent a lot of time more than with any other album to really try to finesse concepts of the songs, lyrics, and the music to new levels. I'm trying to take it to new heights so that, you know, we, we just, just push the bar to another level, mm. uh, pushing the boundary, shape-shifting, and then after this, a lot of people, I would hope, other artists will have confidence to be able to do something different and know it can be successful. And then people also to know that, yo, we can enjoy different things. We can't, it doesn't have to be the same thing going on and that it can all exist within the same place. People can enjoy Justin Bieber and Adele. Why can't they enjoy, enjoy Manifest and other people? And other people, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm sure I can mention another name, but yeah. it, it won't be the same as what you want it to be. But uh, th th tell me something. Uh, you say that what you do is something unique. You try to redefine your space in almost every time. So where do we put you? Evergreen music or commercial music? Wow. I think that's an easy option if you put it that way. Mm. I mean, you, who would not want to be evergreen? <laughs> <laughs> but what, what I believe though is if something is evergreen, it always has commercial potential. If, I, if my music outlives me, it would be beautiful, you know, like the Bob Marley's and the Fellas and the Nina Simone's. Your music outlives you, that shows. Is that where you look? Because well, I listen to you and you keep mentioning those kinds of names. Well, as those who I have mean, inspired. Who would not be inspired by such greatness, yeah. you know, in, in essence? Yeah, definitely, in terms of. Not just them, but many people who have made music that I have been able to sit with, that have helped me make meaning of life or may help me have a good time, mm. helped me make memories. And remember that one time I was with a group of friends somewhere and this song came on and we were like, wow, do you remember that time? That defined our time. Mm. And I mean, just to have a good time soulfully, physically, and all, all sorts of aspects. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make sure that in music, there you can't just listen to it and throw it away. 
that it sits with you. It goes deep into you so much that sometimes you don't know why you're even saying you're reciting 100% of sugar. You don't know why, but you're, you're, you're <laughs> you doing it. You still are. That's fine. Yeah. Um, one thing I need to mention is that you're quite intricate about detail. Why do you seek to communicate? What do you seek to communicate with your pictures and especially the imagery in your videos? Well, I think art has to pay attention to detail. Great art, at least, to pay attention to detail. The same way the greatest filmmakers or the greatest visual artists or muralists pay attention to detail, we have to do the same thing as musicians and lyricists. Do you see more of that in our space here in Ghana? I think is is increasing slowly, but the pressure of doing things fast, fast is very high because people are always chasing relevancy. But I want to make music so that relevancy will chase me. I don't have to worry about chasing relevancy as much. And that's, that gave me the confidence and commitment to be able to take all this time off. I was releasing small, small tracks, but I was working on No Echo for a good two years, just trying to take things to the next level. Otherwise, I'd be wasting my time. I might as well quit, you know. If this album, after you hear Francis, and you don't think it's next level, ring me up personally, you or quit? actually tweet me, I'm quitting. <laughs> I said it here. I'm quitting. If it's not next if it's level, not that good. If, if you listen to it, like my first came to talk all this stuff and What's don't see anything, thing? yeah, then you know, yeah, quit it. I'm quitting. And 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 to be fair, with all the albums you've done, the time space is two years or three, so mm -hmm. it makes sense that you, you say you pay attention to detail and do something great all the time. Yeah. Ahmet, what's that nickname about? Oh, no, no, that's my middle name. Ahmet middle name, Ahmet Ape, cut yeah. short to Ahmet, exactly. that's it. Yeah. Why the name manifest for your, you know, brand name? It was a creative accident. I was trying to write about music. Those were my deep days <laughs> in university. And uh, I think I was trying to define music. It was something about music always needing illumination for every show today. And I decided to put a dot there to separate music from the explanation. Because the dash was not going to be sufficient. Yeah. Aesthetics wouldn't be sufficient. What could be cooler than a dot 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 to dot? Dot 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 to dot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. But um, as we wrap this conversation, yeah. This is also another question I got uh, as one of the tweets I okay. received today. Legend, the greatest genius. Which one best describes you? You're stuck? Oh uh, yeah, of course I'll be stuck. I think it's too it's too early for me to be using terms like legend for myself. Mm -hmm. um, genius? The greatest. I can never call myself the greatest. Because those who came before me informed me. People brought for a star. I can like never call myself the greatest. Genius. Which kind of genius is the one that is, proclaims himself genius? It's like self-praise is no praise. So if, if I'm genius, <laughs> my work should show for it. So, that was, so I can't, that's why I was, I was stumped. I can't. All I can say is I am a person who commits to his work, puts in his all, has been fortunate to be gifted enough and works on my skill every day to take things to new heights. But you say you're God MC. Of course. What does that mean? That means at the moment when I put pen to paper, no contest. No contest? At all. You're certain? <laughs> that if you I'm draw daggers here in a contest, nobody can beat you to it? Hey, my pen game is it's a problem. It's a problem? It's a real for problem. For who? No? For who? For cutting your game? You said? It's for a whole generation to worry about. I take out the <laughs> pen and... And then there's trouble. Yeah. Okay, let's quickly, <laughs> let's quickly talk about uh, your new album, Nowhere Cool. Uh, for those who've been waiting for it, how do they get it? Well, Nowhere Cool, we are officially launching it tomorrow. Um, and people can pre-order it. We tried something innovative. We tried to let people pre-order CDs. I don't think I've I had that, heard that done in Ghana. So we were doing it, collaborating with a, an innovative company called 15ghana.com, yeah. backslash nowhere cool. And people have pre-ordered it. Today I did something interesting where I actually personally delivered some of the first few pre-orders. You said something to Bangladesh Assurance. I think I saw the pictures on one. Ah, yeah. no, no, it was to one of the, a person, I think it was, his name was Bernard Hill. From Vanguard Assurance Audit, so okay. I went there. No, or was, oh, was it Isina? There were, there were a couple, couple, couple of people that okay. we surprised today with that. And then it's also available on iTunes. But tomorrow is the official launch, and it's going to be at the Jaguar showroom. It's going to be on an experience. Jaguar showroom. Yeah, we want to do things in different spaces. <laughs> people do lunch in what? Conference center or some place, and we all go sit there, drink, and take it. Now, Jaguar show. No, why, why Jaguar show? Because we have to be able to create new spaces and new experiences. 
and and for this i mean with all my releases mm -hmm. be, before we're going to do bigger concerts we think we want to create an experience that anybody there will remember it's going to be a small one mainly invites only i'm going to invite a couple of money fans to it i'm going to run a competition but it's a curated experience i'm going to perform live and it's just going to be vim filled and, and i love the fact that you know like you had that reaction to it like the curiosity and then and so I'm, I'm grateful for that i'm grateful the, for the fact that other people too when we we say we are doing this, so they support the idea. Shout out to you, Jam Jar, they're helping us organize. Shout out to Jameson, who's also supporting Stan Big Bank and Alliance Motors for allowing us to come and clear some cars out of the showroom and do some music. And do some music. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank I'm you sure so that for much. many who are watching, they'll, they'll be keen to grab your hand, uh, get their hands on a copy of that album. Get to patronize what is local and Ghanaian made. Celebrate those who are with us so we can all be part of that story when it's told in some 10 15 years to come. Uh, Manifest, I think it would be best for you to close the show for us today if you could do something from your pen, something freestyle. That's our show for us today here, at the, here on the show, pals. My name is Francis Alban. Thanks for your company. Manifest will do us the honors of closing the show. Business yeah. Live is at five. Nowhere cool, so Francis put me on the spot. It's quite a typical. I walk on tippy toes. I ride the radical. D -d -d Damn. We no get lights who can't depend on sights. Me and my A likes don't give a d -d damn. Bottle of apathy, cripple us happily. Some get visa and think they be the man. If you my man 50 grand, then no jokes. You get contract, then slip me my envelope. Slippery slope to flourish and cope. They be, they be, we binging on hope. Empty promises sold on a daily. I should join the Navy so I can be wavy. Oh, ah, oh, ah. First you they worry. Oh, ah, single ain't happy. Married ain't either. Rich, depressed, poor, can't catch a breather. Can't even tell the nightmare from a dream. Oh, mercy me, Nancy, boy, mercy cream. Slim one thick, the thick on the diets. Puppets noisy, puppeteers on the quiet. Don't even try it. It will be needless. Charlie Mantai, so hot, so much sleeveless. Oh, ah, oh, ah. First you the worry. Oh, ah, nowhere cool. <laughs> All right, thank you for coming today. Thank you. Great show. Uh, we'll do this again tomorrow here on The Pulse. Good evening. Business Live is up next.